Hi, I'm Kara Kelly with Clinical HR, and I have with me Scott Carley, the change energizer. Scott, you are one of my favorite people to talk to. You are always so positive. You have such great advice. You've really been a mentor to me over the last couple of years that I've known you. Um, and one of the things that we've talked about recently is how to get over failure, how to, as you like to put it, how to hit a home run after a bad review. Oh, yeah. Well, Kara, um, you know, hitting a home run in business is what we all want to do. And for me, that's whether it's giving a keynote or presentation, whatever it is, I want to hit a home run where the audience gets exactly what they need. It's something that they can take home and use. And it's, uh, you know, it's exactly what they wanted, exactly what the event planner hired me to do. Tell me a little bit about more what, what happened to you this week. I know that you were discussing a kind of a, a little bit of a negative feedback that you got from one of the presentations you gave. How does the change energizer use his own advice for himself? This week I did, I give a presentation and I was super happy about how it went. And it had a lot to do with having courageous conversations with underperformers and, and uh, the trust credit score and, and what happens when somebody fails a trust credit score, how you're able to have that courageous conversation. So I had added a few things that I felt really good about, but I ran out of time. So when I got the reviews back a few days later, they were great. Uh, on a scale of one to five, they were all fives in four areas. And I was just so happy and excited. Yes, that's a home run. That was great. But then two days later, I went back to the reviews because people continued to post and and give their opinions. And oh my word, in a couple of areas, they had tanked and they went from a five to a 3.2. Oh my Ouch. goodness. Yeah, that was pretty bad. I mean, you know, do the math on that one. Somebody was really unhappy with the way I presented. And they put some comments below. That was a little bit helpful, thankfully. And in it, they just said, I really enjoyed a lot of Scott's material, but he didn't engage us in any activities or enough activities. And I thought that it really took the presentation down. And I went, oh my word, that was, uh, it just really took the wind out of me for, uh, for a little while. I just had to take my own advice and I really did. I went back. Now, what would, what would Casey do? You know, what would, uh, what would my heroes do? And there are probably four major things that I talk about in the keynote, how to hit a home run after a big strikeout. And, you know, I talk about how important it is to catch your breath and don't make any rush decisions. That would be a bad thing to do. Step back and get some perspective. You might need to take some critical advice, hold about a little different, and then, you know, ask yourself, well, what would my hero do if they were in these situations? So I went back to number two in particular, and that was step back and get perspective. And I had to think about that. So get perspective. How many times have I given this presentation? How many positive reviews have I had from this presentation? And what was really going on here? What was the mindset of the person that just gave me that review? So I had to think of all of those things. But the reality is, regardless, it's what they saw and what they were thinking at the time. So when that happened, I immediately started thinking about all the things that I could change in my presentation to fix that. But as I looked at it longer and longer, I realized there was only one thing they didn't like. And that was that I didn't have an activity and engagement. And so what did that make me do? It made me think, okay, there are some absolutes that have to remain in any presentation that I make. Mm -hmm. Stories, illustrations, really good points, and activities. And so it forged into me how important it was that when I'm getting up to hit a home run and holding the bat, I need to make sure all the ingredients are there. This was one review in how many hundreds of reviews have you received from presentations that you've given? Yeah, hundreds, hundreds. Not only that, I checked back yesterday and the scores are creeping up. 
because other people are coming in and sharing how much they enjoyed it. And that was a feedback that I got that day, verbally from everybody in the room. So that was my point. In business, we're all going to have times when we get a bad review, when somebody is not a happy camper with what we do. And sometimes they can be very vocal, they can be inflammatory, they can be in our face. We can feel like that it, man, this is really affecting my reputation and whether or not people will do business with me. And my advice, just like how to hit a home run after a big strikeout, is to step back, get some perspective, anchor yourself in your past victories and all the good reviews and the good things that you have done, and then get back up and start swinging and give people exactly what they want and what they need. And eventually, they'll bury that bad review. And if you say you're never getting bad reviews, you're just not telling the truth or you're <laughs> oblivious. Tara, thank you, man. I really enjoyed spending some time with you today. And um, I just love what you do. You're so good at HR, clinical, um, dental HR. You're just great at it. And I love it. Oh, if there's one person who knows about bad reviews, it's going to be an HR person. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes the HR person. Thank you, Scott. All right. Thank you. Bye.